this is not something your parents will come and control. You, when you are teenagers and you have hormones and you reach the age of puberty and you're attracted to the opposite gender, that means in Islam you are adults and you have to make your own responsible decisions. Your parents are no longer responsible for your Islam. You are responsible. If you are 14 years old, 15 years old, even 13 years old, and you die today, then Allah will not say, minor, go easy on him. You are treated as an adult in our deen. This religion makes you an adult early. The moment you start feeling a little funny about the other gender, you're an adult. You will be tried by Allah like a 50 year old, like a 30 year old, you're the same as them. Hold yourself to a higher standard. Don't think of yourself as just a kid. You are an adult. Whoever did that, he's, he's, gonna, he's earned, he's come to contact with a great sin. How can a Muslim do this? How can a Muslim do shit? How can a Muslim kill someone? How can a Muslim commit zina? How can they do that? يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ the punishment will be doubled for those people. The, pa the passage began, these are special people to me. And now Allah says, these kaba'ir, these three things, shirk, murder, and zina, adultery, illegitimate relations, these three things, if a Muslim does it, anybody else does it, they will get punished. A Muslim does it, I'll punish him double. He knew it and he still did it. The mushrik, at least he didn't know when he did it. The Muslim knew it and he still did it. On Judgment Day, on Resurrection Day, the punishment is doubled for him. وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ muhanan, And he will remain in that punishment humiliated. He will constantly be humiliated. Because shirk and killing a person and zina are humiliating crimes. They take away the dignity of a human being. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla is extremely angry at these people. Then you're like, maybe somebody sitting in this audience that's made some mistakes in their life. Don't raise your hand. Only Allah knows your mistakes. I don't want to know. And you shouldn't tell people. It's between you and Allah. Maybe you've made some big mistakes in your life. What about you? You hear these ayahs, are like, oh my God, double punishment. Maybe I should leave the masjid right now because that's pretty depressing. And then shaitan comes to those kinds of people. You know what shaitan says to them? Man, you going to hell anyway. Might as well party it up. You know, what are you doing in the masjid anymore? You're, you're already on the express train, just go all the way, man. You know, you're already a goner. What does Allah say about these people? Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha. The exception is people who did shirk, people who did murder, people who did zina. But the exception is even if you did these things, these three things are all of these things, if you turn back to Allah. And you became a believer again. It's like you came, became a new Muslim. You came into Islam all over again. And this time, وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And he was very serious about doing good things from now on. It's not just عَمِلَ صَالِحًا يَقُولَ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا نُسَمِّي هَذَا الْمَفْعُولَ الْمُطْلَقَ This is called the absolute additive. It's added to the verb to emphasize it over anything else. What that means in simple English is, this person came back, to, returned back to Allah, fixed their faith, and then after fixing their faith, this time they take their actions very seriously. They take their actions very, very seriously. They are really keen on doing good deeds. If you can become that person, even if you've done some terrible things in your life, then those people, Allah will take all of their sins and convert them into good deeds. He will not just get rid of your sins. We want Allah to get rid of our sins. Maybe your sins are the size of a mountain. I don't want to see that mountain on judgment day. Allah will not get rid of the mountain. Allah will turn the mountain into a mountain of good deeds. If you can make tawbah. This is Ar-Rahman. Allah is telling us the people that are furthest from Allah. You know the Rasul told us, لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن the one who commits zina is not a Muslim, not a believer at the time he's doing zina. He's not a believer. The people furthest from Allah, the people who lost their iman, the people who do shirk, the people who kill another person, an innocent person, the people who commit zina, they're furthest from Allah. And Allah says, even if they are so far away from me, they turn back towards me, I will forget all of their crimes, and I will convert their crimes into good deeds for them on judgment day. SubhanAllah. I will make them ibadur rahman to me, because they came back. They were so far away and they still came back to me. That's what Allah wants. 
Allah has always been extremely forgiving, always loving. Now somebody, shaitan comes to them as they're listening to this dars, and shaitan comes to them and says, Hey look, if you do a really bad sin, and then you make tawbah, you can take the mountain of bad deed and turn it into a mountain of good deed. So why don't we just go out there and do some really bad stuff, and then make tawbah. Because man, that's the easiest way to get a huge pile of good deeds. <laughs> And somebody else is thinking, sitting there, man, these people were so messed up. And they made tawbah. And Allah gave them so much. But I didn't, I'm not that bad. I just missed a couple of salahs. I got angry at my mom once. You know, I talked back to my husband. And I said some mean things to my sister. And you know, I, I talked back to my father, my mother, etc. I have some issues. I've done some bad things, but it's not that bad. I didn't kill anyone. I didn't do zina. So is my tawbah any good? I mean their tawbah is, they did big things and they made tawbah is, but my tawbah is for smaller things. So does it count? Is it any good? Allah says in the next ayah, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Anybody else who makes tawbah and does any good deeds, فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ That's a pretty good tawbah too. He's also coming back to Allah with a very serious tawbah. In other words, you don't say, man, I haven't been really bad. So my tawbah is not as good as the guy who's you know, he was a gangster, he like killed 20 people and then he became a Muslim and then he made tawbah. No, 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 no. Whatever sins you've made, whatever sins you've made. Remember one thing about sins. If they are a, if they are no big deal to you, if your sins are no big deal to you, then they are a big deal to Allah. And when your sins are a big deal to you, they're a big problem for you, then they are a small problem for Allah. Allah will forgive them easily if you care a lot about your mistakes. If you don't care about your mistakes, it could be a small mistake, but it will be very big on judgment day. Because you didn't care. Caring comes in the heart. Allah Azza wa Jal judges what is in our hearts, our attitudes. So, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ Okay. So what's the next category? He says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ Young people, please listen carefully. These are people, they, they never witness useless company. Zur means false testimony. It also means company that is useless, doesn't have benefit. It's batil. In other words, they don't hang out until 2 in the morning smoking hookah. They don't hang out till 3 in the morning just talking nonsense. They don't do that. They don't hang out with their friends and you know what they do at the mall. They don't do that. They don't get together and watch movies for hours and hours and hours. Why not? Because they've already made tawbah. And when someone makes tawbah, they know, you know when you, go, when you do big sins, you know how you get to big sins? You start with small sins. And then they get bigger and bigger, and then you get into the big sins. Then you realize that your sins were a result of your friends. The people you spend time with. They were the one that gets you, makes it easy for you to do bad things. So Allah says now that they have made tawbah, they make sure they are never sitting in a gathering of evil. They're never sitting in a gathering of falsehood. Sometimes you get invited to a party. And maybe those people that invited you are not very religious. So they're blasting the music, women have makeup on, their men and women are mixed together and you're in the middle of this party. What are you supposed to, it's your, your uncle. It's your cousin's party, you're like, you don't stand up and say, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ And then walk out. But you make an excuse. I have to get going. Inshallah, I gotta get going. So hopefully you get there, for 10 minutes you were in that gathering, because it's family, you gotta go. Then you heard the Adhan, and say, hey, it's the Adhan, I'll be right back. And then you go, and you pray Maghrib, and you hang out until Isha. Pray Isha, then come back to the party and say, everybody's already left. And like, oh yeah, sorry. You can do that. You, but you, ha you don't embarrass those people. You don't embarrass them, but you don't participate either. You find a smart way to get out of it. So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا When they pass by useless conversation, when they pass by a useless activity, when they're exposed to it, and they will be, then they leave it in a dignified way. They don't just make a scene. 